my first experience with homelessness would be around five or six years old when I was in the shelter, living in San Jose, California. You know, my parents, you know, for the most part, we had a really normal middle-class lifestyle, but I really don't really too much remember the specifics, but yeah, one day we came up on hard times and we ended up in this, living in the shelter downtown. And yeah, I could just remember waking up um, every day having to go outside and just every morning and figure out, you know, our day plan. And we would have to leave the shelter every morning to, you know, figure out what we had to do for the day until six, around 6 p.m., 7 o'clock when we could come back. Oh, it was my mother, it was my father, my, uh, my older brother and sister. My name is Demetrius Steiger. When I was 10 years old, um, I remember, I remember us being evicted. The sheriff coming, doing the whole nine, having to get us out the house. We, we had nothing packed and they was like, y'all gotta go. So we just start grabbing stuff and we actually had a yard sale with all the stuff as we sat in the yard and, and figured out our next move basically. So yeah, about 10 years old was the next time I could vividly remember. So yeah, behind me is, um, you know, the Modesto Gospel Mission. One of the shelters I've, uh, you know, had the pleasure of living in over the years growing up and, you know, shouts, shouts out to places like this, you know, that take in the homeless and help people, you know, come with come with programs to help the people. But, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot more that it's a lot more that that we we gotta do. We gotta we gotta get hands on with this to really tackle this homelessness, you know. So, but yeah, this is this is my old home though, man. I remember just being off and on homeless, always like with my parents. So it's like, I re I really. Who knows? It probably was, it probably, every year we probably was homeless. It could have been like every other year. That's how it was. So it was like, we was never in a place for more than a year. Like never. So it was just always, it was never, we, I always took it as, it was always like that. It was kind of a lifestyle. Even if we was in the house, it was like, oh, we won't be here too long. So kind of just kind of got used to it. My mother ended up becoming ill and falling, she had a stroke and fell into a coma for about a year and a half. And my father, he took that pretty hard. And while she was in the coma, he ended up falling heavily on drugs. And we basically, um, CPS ended up coming to get us at the school, at school and taking us away from our father, where we um, ended up in foster care for the next couple of years. My uncle actually came and adopted me and my sister because they were threatening to uh, split us up. So we ended up back in San Jose as teenagers, you know, um, yeah, with my uncle. Man, so yeah, we um so we got adopted by my uncle, my dad's brother, and um life was good for the most part. It's the first time I ever experienced, you know, breakfast in the morning, allowances. Man, it was crazy. I had my own bed. It was crazy for the most part. Um, but once again, I had I had already habits from just living my own lifestyle, not really having no parent supervision. So I was kind of reckless. I was kind of wild. And my, my, my aunt and uncle wasn't liking that. They were, you know, I was getting in too much trouble at school. I wasn't really listening to nobody. My mom passed away. So I, I was kind of rebellious at the time. And I'm not going to lie, my aunt and uncle kind of, you know, they kind of got fed up with me. And they like Vegas basically gave me an ultimatum. And, you know, I left, I left the house and never, never went back. I left at 15 and never looked back. And that was the first time I experienced homelessness as, you know, as a teen, as myself alone, 
by myself. So yeah, this is, um, we're standing in front of the, it was once called the Heritage Inn. Um, this, is a, this is a very pivotal point in my life where I feel like um, homelessness and just um, being a, 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 a young teen growing into a young adult, you know, just all came together. Right here was where um, one of my good friends, Samson Nacho, was uh, killed and a few other of my friends were shot. And you know, it was just it was just a big thing out here. You know, um, a lot of people was affected by it. You know, um, growing up as a young teen, it was the first time I ever experienced, you know, um, death or you know, you know, traumatic uh, experience so close to home and, and really being a part of it, seeing it firsthand. So, yeah, um, this building. I always pass this building, and I always just think about that. Like, whether whether I'm doing good, whether I'm feeding the homeless, I just always pass this building and it kind of just give me a reminder to just, you know, push hard for, 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 for the ones that can't be here. So, yeah, RP my brother, man. Being homeless at 15 was um, um, life changing. It was very, I mean, now that I look back at it, I see how a lot of people don't make it out the streets, to be honest. But I wouldn't change it for nothing because it made me who I am today. But ultimately, it was very hard. It's a lot of long nights, a lot of late nights, early mornings, a lot of long, depressing, by yourself, who can I call on? And ultimately, spiritual breaking, like things, bro, like you really have to become close with God. I don't know whether you're spiritual or not, but you're really gonna have to tap into a higher source. And that's what I did. I tapped in with God. I started becoming, I started just putting my faith more in God. I stopped thinking I was in control of everything. And really, the day I just was like, everything is not all on, it is on my shoulders, but I don't got control over everything. Of course, anybody would want something better, right, for their life. I mean, most people would. So, I mean, that's pretty much what it was. Um, I came to a point in my life where I had been homeless for about 10 years. And then I had ended up um, having my first son. So I was like, whoa, I was kind of taken back. It wasn't just me no more. It's not like I could just be out here doing what I want or being lazy even if I wanted to. So it was like I had to do something. So I just started thinking out, outside and around the box. And yeah, it was kind of weird. Like I said, I had, that, I had got a job right after that. I had my son and I got a job. First job I've ever had in my life, so I was I was happy, I was feeling myself, I was in a good place. And that's when I came up with the idea I wanted to help the homeless regularly. And that's what we did a couple weeks later. Hungry Miles of America is, you know, man, a breath of fresh air to me. Like, you know, ever since I started it, it's just an organization that I started a couple years ago to help you know, individuals dealing with, you know, circumstances and situations like myself, homelessness, you know, I like to help the, you know, the youth coming up, at risk youth, youth in foster homes, whatever the case may be, anybody that, any youth that I feel like out there needs some guidance or needs some love or some, hey man, we all for you. We all for you, because I know how it is to be in that situation. Also, um, low income families. Shouts out to all the low income families, because I, Man, my mom and dad was one of those people too. So, yeah. So, Hungry Mouths of America is an organization that you know help help people in those situations. So, yeah. And I've just been going hard over the years, building it up, and just you know, we got plenty more that we just hope to to do in the future. Yo, 
Yo, yo. Brother man, brother man. If y'all hungry, y'all hungry? And we got some hygiene kits for y'all, man. There you go. What's going down, brother? God bless you too, brother. You already know I got you. Already. God bless y'all, man. You want one, boss? Already. What you like, McChickens or um? God bless you, man. Take a water too. I got a little hygiene kit for you. Hold on. How y'all doing today? That's good, man. Man, I'm just trying to do my part out here, B. You are God got us, man. God bless you already. God bless you. We gonna definitely drop him off one for sure, just on the strength. He need that. God bless you, man. Excuse me, baby girl. You hungry? I got some waters and some sandwiches for you if you're thirsty. For sure. No problem. Yo, yo, y'all hungry? I got some sandwiches and fresh water if y'all. For sure, man. I got you, I got you. For both of y'all, man. God bless you for sure. Y'all don't want no sandwiches? Okay, okay, okay. No problem, no problem. God bless you too. I got a couple burgers for y'all, man. And some hygiene and some water for y'all. How many people? Y'all got three people over here? Okay, I got you too, boss. Hold on. I'm gonna leave him one just cuz. Here you go, OG. God bless you for sure. I got some water for you too. God bless you. Hey, you the third person that said that. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. God bless you. Have a good day. Already. Ooh, it's hot, boy. You can just imagine how it is just having to sleep and just live out here 24 7. We've been out here, what? 30 minutes. And look at my face. Starting when I first started this, I did, I just, this was just pure passion. I love to do this. I love to help people. Also, coming from what I come from, of course, why wouldn't I? But now I'm, I'm more leaning towards the business side. I've got my 501c3 now, so I'm a licensed organization now in California and all across the world. So yeah, at first we, we started off in our backpacks and now, you know, we're official now. Now we're, we're in a position to, you know, make a bigger impact. So that's what we're hoping for in the next couple of years to go. If Demetrius Steiger had the ultimate reach to end homelessness, man, I would really just invest a lot in education. I would, I would uh, want to teach people a lot more because some of the things is crisp, crisp cut. A lot of things that you know we feel like is hard or over too much. It could be just some instructions on a piece of paper or a phone call that you have to make or, you know, and at the end of the day, if I would have knew that 10 years ago and if I would have heard other people tell me that, I want to create an environment where of just knowledge for, for people that don't got it because I feel like you could learn some stuff that could t take you and your family out of generational wealth or just general out of generational curses. But if we don't know nothing, we will never grow. So even if I did have all the resources I could give, I started to realize like even giving, just, just giving ain't enough. Or maybe the type of giving you giving. So I would wanna give knowledge. So that's what I would invest everything into just giving, um, forming a community of knowledge, whether it's a school, a university, for free and, and and we're just we're just giving free education to the people for the rest of their life and we stop in generational curses and gener and we start in generational wealth you feel me from up here so that's kind of i think that's where i would go with it.